Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall this week. The Police Department's second quarter crime report shows an increase in Part 1 crimes during the first six months of the year. Those include Part 1 violent and property crimes, which were up by 11 percent between January and June compared to the same period last year. Part 1 violent crimes include homicide, rape, robbery and aggravated assault. Those crimes were up 30 percent from this time in 2013, but homicides are at a three year low. The rise in violent crime has been driven by a 50 percent increase in the number of reported aggravated assaults. There have been an upsurge in the number of shootings into occupied homes and vehicles this year. In many cases, there were multiple potential victims. The Violent Incident Response Team investigates all incidents involving shootings into residences and vehicles. They gather intelligence to help investigators learn more about motives and possible suspects and to assist district commanders in targeting patrol areas. We also work closely with our federal ATF task force to file federal gun charges when appropriate. Part 1 property crimes include burglary, larceny and motor vehicle theft. Property crime is up 8% over the first six months of 2013. However, motor vehicle theft is at a three year low. Part 1 property crime made up approximately 85% of all Part 1 crimes during the first half of 2014. Larcenies accounted for more than half or 52% of all Part 1 crime. Officers are trying to combat these numbers with a variety of initiatives. We are continuing to do our residential awareness program to focus on residential burglaries. Excuse me, shoplifting accounted for 29% of our larcenies during the first six months of the year. We have one investigator who focuses on shoplifting who works closely with other investigators across the Triangle area. Recently, many of our commanders also met with the management of some of the locations where many of our shopliftings are occurring. Larcenies from vehicles and theft of vehicle parts and accessories make up approximately 37% of our larcenies. We continue to encourage people not to leave items such as purses and electronics in plain view in their vehicles. For more information about the second quarter crime report, visit DurhamPolice.com. Some significant on-street parking changes are about to go into effect for downtown Durham and the surrounding area. With parking more in demand than ever, the city will expand and enforce two-hour on-street parking limits on designated streets surrounding the American Tobacco, Warehouse, Brightleaf and Central Park districts. The changes are being made to improve the parking experience for customers and visitors to these areas. They will go into effect on October 1st. At that point, two-hour parking will be enforced from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Monday through Friday on portions of the following streets. Willard, Jackson and Yancey streets in the American Tobacco District, West Main, Fuller, West Morgan, North Duke, West Peabody and Albemarle streets in the Warehouse and Brightleaf districts. And Foster, Hunt, West Corporation and Seminary streets as well as Rigsby Avenue in the Central Park District. For more information, visit the Transportation Department's homepage on the city's website. The ability to text to 911 if needed is now expanding to more Durham cell phone customers. T-Mobile has just joined Verizon Wireless, AT&T and Sprint in enabling its cell phone customers to send text messages to 911 in an emergency. Text should only be used when calling is not possible. They should be short, no abbreviations included and provide the location and nature of the emergency. The Durham Emergency Communications Center was the first 911 center in North Carolina and one of the first in the nation to enable text to 911 technology using 911 digits and live call takers. All stakeholders in the Andrew Driver Streetscape project will want to mark their calendars now. A ribbon cutting ceremony for the new streetscape will be held on Saturday, October 11th in the Andrew Avenue Baptist Church parking lot. The project represents a nearly $5 million investment in the area by the city to improve the appearance of the corridor and to help spur economic activity in the community. The deadline is fast approaching to register for activities associated with Durham's Minority Enterprise Development Week. The week will take place October 6th through the 10th. The deadline to register is September 30th. Minority Enterprise Development Week celebrates the achievements of minority entrepreneurs and emphasizes the importance of equal opportunity for all. You can register online at DurhamChamber.org. Durham is going to the dogs, at least for one very fun day. Find out how you and your four-legged friends can get in on all the action when City Hall this week continues. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help,
welcome back. We're all familiar with canker worms, those creepy green worms that just seem to fall from the sky. While they're certainly annoying, did you know they are also destroying some of our trees? If you want to learn more about these destructive pests and how to get rid of them, you're invited to an informational session on Monday, September 22nd. The session will take place from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Kirby Horton Hall at the Sarah P. Duke Gardens. You can register for the session at treesacrossdurham.org. Dog lovers and, of course, your four-legged friends are invited to a day of fun at the 11th annual Wolfstock. The event will be held at Southern Boundaries Park on Sunday, October 5th from noon until 5 p.m. Activities will include a Skyhounds Disc Dog Stake Championship, canine demonstrations and games, an agility zone, rabies and microchip clinics, free caricatures, and much more. Bring a small bag of dry dog food and support Meals on Wheels and their clients, canine friends. For more information, visit the Parks and Recreation homepage on the city's website. That does it for City Hall this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can also find us on demand on Durham Television Network's webpage and on YouTube. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us.